Ain't this a coincidence? You was looking for onion rings and I showed up. Folks, I have the crispiest onion ring ever. Listen to this. Extra crispy onion rings. That's what we're talking about. And you throw the things that I look for in an onion ring is first of all, are they sliced thin enough that you know the onion might have cooked a little bit? I'm not talking about we're going to slice them this thick. I want them down here like this to where I know that onion is good and soft. I don't want that crunch on the inside. I want it on the outside. But also I want to make sure that whatever they dip that onion ring is, it has to be able to stay on there. It can't when you just like take a bite and then the crumbs and the crust fall off and you think, what happened? This is not the onion ring that I was after. So I did some experimenting. I did, and I tried it with a little more flour, a little less flour, buttermilk versus milk. And hey, I finally just come down to it to what I think is the best extra crispy onion ring you ever gonna find. So let's talk about the star of the show. No, the not major. me. No, not me, not the mage, <laughs> not none of the four leggers. We're talking about the onion, or as Justin Wilson called them, the onion. Do y'all hear that? The sound of summer. We call them locusts, cicadas, whatever you want to call them. They always show up last of July and they sort of stick around till about frost nearly, but you can hear them. I don't think they ever go to sleep. Some of the worst times I ever remember trying to sleep in summertime on a ranch was because they was right by a tree by my teepee every night singing that song. But onion, there is yellow onion, white onion, then there is what some people call a red onion or a purple onion. Me, I like a Vidalia yellow sweet onion for an onion ring. You wanna to try to find them and I couldn't. I like them that are pretty big, but also they're just about this thick. So you get more sort of volume to there cause you can see the biggest onion ring is gonna come from in here. So let me just go ahead and get him pruned up there just a minute. And we'll put this aside. Be sure you get down there to the meat of it. That is what you call coming off there just nearly as good as it's supposed to. But folks, I would say the desired size is pretty well close to 5 sixteenths on the numerical scale. So slice her down there straight as you can. Just let her fall off. Keep slicing. Is now, 5 sixteenths correct or are you just joking? No ma'am, I think that's pretty close. 5 sixteenths is that one little bitty mark right past a quarter of an inch. Remember when you used to help me carpenter? And I'd say, how much was that? And you'd say 72 and two marks. So I would say that was just like a long quarter of an inch. Yes, that would be awful close, it would. So get your onion all the way sliced up. This is what you call the leftover and I'm not gonna fry all of them. So you think to yourself, what could eat an onion in the wild? Well. I know that I have seen possums in camp dragging some onion off. Uh, maybe it'll keep the skunks away, and who knows, maybe it'll keep the ticks out of camp. So we'll give it back to Mother Nature. It'll make what you call it, compost it will. One and one half cups of all-purpose flour. To that, original seasoning. About, I'm even gonna measure for y'all today because people say, he don't ever measure, we don't know what it is. One and we're gonna call a half tablespoon, okay? Then we're gonna put some baking powder in here, which is about two teaspoons, which is pretty close to that. Then we're gonna take some black, some wooden smoked paprika, which is about that much, and some coarse ground black pepper, which is that much. Now I want you to go ahead and give that a mixing while you've got it there handy. Just make sure that you get everything incorporated in there well. Well, dry is mixed up. Now let's get to the wet. A lot of people are gonna use buttermilk. I tried in the experimentation, both forms, even milk adding vinegar to make buttermilk, but still I went back to the whole milk. So Why? I just like the taste better that it give. And here's a secret thing coming that you didn't even know existed. It's not an egg that's going in there. No. What is it? It is sour cream. What? 
Yes, sour cream. And we're going to take a half a cup, and that's an eight ounce container. So we're going to take half of it. Eight minus four, four minus eight. Hey, it's pretty close to half a cup. It is. Because there's eight ounces in a cup. So right? what does the sour cream do? The sour cream is going to give it a little more thickness in the batter, but also going to give it a little tang. But we're fixing to combat that again, Shen, because I'm combining all the things you might not have thought was ever in an onion ring. What are we talking about? Some of this honey, yes. And we're going to put about that you much. You lost your mind. No, I have not. I promise they are the best, crispiest onion ring you've ever seen in your life. Don't just mix that a little. You want to mix it because that sour cream will begin to make little crumbs if you let it. I mean, you'll, you'll see little knots in there. So get it smooth. Whisk it for a little bit to where you know everything is smooth. And then guess what is down here at the end? It's one of my favorite ingredients. Rice Krispies? No. Oh, no. It is panko. Folks, we are going to cover the spectrum to give you that extra crispy crunch on the outside. So... Let's get some oil to heating. Well, the oil is preheating, and I need you to preheat it to 375 degrees. And Shan's always telling me, well, what kind of oil did you use? First of all, I'm going to tell you what I didn't choose. I didn't use Tropartic. I didn't use Pennzoil. I didn't use WD-40. Today, I am using peanut oil. Now, if you or someone you know that's going to eat these has a peanut allergy, get you a good high temp oil because we need to run at 375 degrees. Get it preheated. Now, to start out with, I would say the best tool to use for this is the fork. Just drop her in the wet, make sure that it's coated really well, put it over here in the dry, and just take your hands and make sure that everybody has got some good flour and seasoning on them. With the fork, you're back in here again, you are, one more time right here. Shake the excess flour off. Back oh in the wet God. it goes one more time and into the panko. Now, we have panko in the bottom of that bowl, but I also like to keep a little in here to where you can sprinkle it around. And then I just need you to give it a little mashing to where everybody is covered really well. That is what you call an extra crispy onion ring done right the cowboy way. Well, it is a done deal. It is that dog will hunt for sure. You can see all of them laying out there so pretty. Oil is at 375, maybe just a tad more because when you put these in, remember that milk is cold, everything else is going to drop that temperature a little. But you want to see that sizzle as soon as they hit the water. Do not overcrowd the swimming pool, no. And we're just going to fry these till they get golden brown. And it ain't going to take long because I want you to look here at what's already happening. That's why we wow. cut them in onions. That's why we cut them onions thin as we could because the frying process don't take long at all. And I like mine good and golden brown. Keep floating, keep turning. You don't want to burn none of them. You get them to the desired color that you want. I'd say that one was pretty close to what I would call a plenty good looking onion ring. Mercy, I'm telling you folks, no more pulling up to the button where you push it and say, I'd like to order some onion rings. No, I, I want you to, I mean, look at the Christmas that there's stuff just going on everywhere, everybody. I don't know how, like, I don't think you can translate how crispy these are. Like, oh, can you hear the... You can. Yeah, they're so crispy. You can when it transfers to this right here, here to here.
we we'll have to hang on saying because I'm going to enjoy this. I am. Best onion ring I've ever eaten in my life. That crunch. And see what I'm talking about? That batter's all the way around. The onion is good and soft. Mm. Do the hula hoop. Made me want to do the onion ring hula hoop dance. Hula, hula, hula. Hey, you got them over here. Woo, onion rings don't get no better than that, folks. There was no meat involved in the making of this video and two have boycotted us. Two have stayed. So I pulled some of the batter off for the two that are dedicated to their job. It's got a little crunch. Oh yeah, folks, some of the crispiest onion rings I've ever seen in my life. Remember, everything that we use today will be listed down there in the little thing where it says printable recipe. Or you can just go to the website, hit the little recipe tab. There's so many on there, I can't keep up with it no more, but hey, you'll enjoy this. Get the kids in there to help you make them. That's what it's about, sharing food with the family and being a crispy onion ring maker. As always, it is with great honor and great privilege that I tip my hat to all the servicemen and women and all the people who have kept that old flag a flying, all the veterans too. And folks, to all the rest of you that's out there just making a difference, just keep making a difference because that's what it's all about. Always step up and do the best job you can. To the rest of you, come on in here. We're going to get a hug. Yep, we're going to get one. We ain't going to mash the onion ring. I'm going to be gentle. <clears throat> God bless you each and every one, and I'll see you down the crispiest onion ring trail ever.